Hey y'all, Data Guy here. And today I'm actually making a video uh, at a viewer request um, who wanted to know what or how to become a data engineer uh, from the perspective of a total beginner that has no experience in the industry and is just trying to make maybe a career change. Maybe they saw how maybe they see AI coming for their job and they want to learn how to create and program AI rather than you know having their job consumed by it. You know, it's either gonna be you're gonna use it or you're going to lose to it. Am I right? Or am I right? Um, so first, I just wanted to kind of talk about, you know, why I see data engineering, you know, as a great career. Um, and that's really because the flow of data isn't going to lessen, it's only going to continue to expand. Um, and so the people that are actually able to work with those data flows who are actually able to create useful data out, out of the fire hose that is modern data, you know, most of it is utter garbage until, you know, someone has actually transformed it. There's been some process that it's undergone to make it human readable. And so data engineers are the people in charge of that process. And thus they are the holders of the levers of power of data in my mind. Um, and so that's honestly why I thought this is a great idea for a video because, you know, it's a great time to talk about, hey, how can you get into this field? How can you become one of those people that controls those levers of power of data? Um, and so, what I'll kind of show within this uh, video is, you know, what is a data engineer talk about kind of what are some of the basic things you need to know um, if you are even want to become a data engineer, some of the basic concepts you'll need to understand. Um, then I'll talk about, hey, what are some real world uh, examples of experience that you can gain? You can get started on, you know, building examples right now, um, ways to kind of, you know, build up your portfolio of work so that when you're in an interview, you're not just pulling things out of your ass the entire time. Um, and then once you, I'll talk a little bit more about, hey, what are the kind of different ways you can specialize? What are the different uh, niches of data engineering that you might want to explore? Um, and then I'll just talk, finish it off with talking about, hey, you know, what are some great ways to get started? What are some good training courses? Where uh, can you go to actually meet fellow data engineers and, you know, kind of get yourself immersed and build that network because everyone knows your network is your net worth. Um, so without further ado, I'll get into kind of, you know, what a data engineer is. And we're actually going to be joined by a guest today, uh, the little data dog, little piglet. Um, so excuse his heavy breathing, but he is demanding to sit in my lap right now. Um, so up here, I've just got a kind of a couple examples of things that data engineers do to kind of just, you know, describe their jobs. Um, so what are their, I mean, they're obvious, their biggest responsibility is developing, maintaining, uh, your database architecture. And this is going to be a little bit high level because I do another video on what is a data engineer. So if you're looking to go deeper, please go check that out. Um, but essentially what you're doing is building your business's data architecture. Uh, let's figure out, hey, how do we get data from our CRM, from our sales platforms into a database, into a data warehouse that our analytics team can then use that data to train ML models, to do predictive modeling, to figure out, hey, where are our customers most likely to buy? Um, you know, what products should we promote more? Uh, and just generally use that data to actually improve your business rather than just having it sit there. Because everyone, you know, talks about the power of big data, but big data isn't just collecting it. It's transforming it. It's making sure that's usable. And then it's also giving it and making it available to teams that can actually use that data to uh, make actionable insights and figure out, hey, how do we improve this business? And so the way things are going to interact with day-to-day, uh, -day, you know, they're using databases to build this, they're using different scripts to manage their workflows, they're using tools like Airflow to orchestrate it all. Um, and it really is such a diverse ecosystem in terms of, you know, some people can be working in streaming analytics and they're only working with Spark and figuring out, you know, how do we process all of our game streaming data? All the way, you know, back to the classic, like, Oracle on-prem database dudes that are sitting there in a, you know, air gap, isolated warehouse, three levels underground, going and maintaining server racks. And, you know, those skill sets of those two different people are wildly different. But almost at every, you know, you're going to be using things like SQL, you're going to have to understand, you know, how data sets work, you're going to understand how data pipelines work, and understand, you know, how data processing and data modeling uh, actually take place and how to build and code systems to uh, accommodate those. So here I just brought up a kind of screen of some different technologies and different things that you're going to need to be uh, familiar with if you want to be a data engineer. Um, and so in terms of mathematics, and just like the guys could be all the way down to the basics, getting you know like stats, algebra, so you can't be an engineer without knowing basic math. Um, 
And then in terms of programming languages, you're going to need SQL. It's not even up here because of how ridiculously essential it is. You might need to know Java, might need to know C++, not super essential, but Python and SQL are your two biggest ones. You're going to want to learn those. Those will be key. Uh, Java, I would say, is next. And then maybe Go or Scala in addition to these, uh, you know, to Ruby, which is already on here. I would say Ruby isn't as essential now. Um, and then you're also going to need to obviously also understand relational databases. So things like Redshift, things like, you know, NoSQL, MySQL, things like Snowflake, uh, Postgres databases. Those are really having a big resurgence popularity. And you also will want to be acquainted with the different uh, cloud providers. So Big3, AWS, Google Cloud, Azure, the different terminologies, you know, what databases they have on each, how data flows in between them, how to connect to each, how credentialing works. Those are going to be crucial because you're going to have, no matter what company you're at, they're going to be using services from one of those three providers. It might be a mix of all three. They might be locked into one cloud. You know, maybe they aren't an AWS shop. Maybe they're the Google Cloud shop and they only use one of the two. Um, but it's good to just be acquainted in the general ecosystems so that you know, when you need to specialize in one of them, you can. You'll also need to know your intermediary systems like you know S3 buckets. Uh, and then over here, there's Apache Spark, Hive, and Hadoop for data processing. So Spark is kind of like a real-time uh, analytics processing. So it's really, that's where Databricks is. And so that's really good at processing large amounts of data. So going to want to learn you know, Spark and then also something like Airflow or another orchestration service on top of it. Um, and so those are kind of the main services and languages you'll need to know. Obviously, there's a bunch of different databases out there. There's a bunch of different, you know, providers of every kind of software. But as long as you know the basics of how a SQL database is structured and how to interact with it through SQL, it doesn't really make a difference. You, know, you can learn how to connect to it and kind of different quirks over your individual database. But just knowing the basics is really what you're going to want to focus on the most. And so in terms of, you know, what kind of real world experience, you know, how can you get started from scratch when obviously no one's going to employ a data engineer that has never worked with data before. But what you can do is actually go out there, build some projects on your GitHub repository. So I'm not even that great at contributing to GitHub, I guess, but I got 45 contributions the last year, got some repositories of different workshops, different projects I've worked on. And I also uh, forked the Gloomhaven database because I love Gloomhaven. Uh, it's a really cool card game if you haven't heard of it. And I love min-maxing video games and, or board games of any kind. Just sorry, enough aside. And so this is a great way to kind of show employers. And I think in almost every job interview I've had where they've asked, hey, you know, do you have a GitHub? Can you show it to me? And being able to show them, hey, you're working on projects, you're actively contributing, you're staying up to date. It's really just showing that you're working and you're willing to learn to actually build up, you know, the skills needed to become an effective data engineer. Because at any company, you're going to have to learn a lot to actually be an effective employee there. And so showing them that you have those skills are, is really important. Other things you can do is attend, you know, go on LinkedIn, go search for data engineers, uh, you know, meetup.com is a great one. So this is a, um, let me just, so this is just an example of a meetup I did in Toronto um, back in August, the Toronto Modern Data Stack. And so going to these kind of events, you can meet a lot of like-minded professionals. A lot of times I hear people, you know, passing information about jobs, you have, you know, you can meet data engineers, understand, hey, what's actually going on in the industry, pick their brains a little bit, you know, obviously don't go around there as a new guy and just start asking more for jobs and, you know, what ways to learn. But if you approach a conversation, they build a connection, build some relationships, then knowledge and potentially jobs will come uh, later. Um, and then another way, once you've kind of gotten your teeth cut, um, you've learned some of the basics, going to hackathons is another great option. Um, and there it's even more likely, you know, that you'll meet and collaborate with people that you, know, you potentially build your own projects with or that have jobs that they want to help you out with. Um, so really, you know, you just want to kind of get yourself out there in the industry because it is a relatively small ecosystem. You know, I live in New York City and I feel like I already have a good concept, you know, who most of the data engineering ecosystem is here just because, you know, it is a very specialized job. And once you kind of know everyone at all the big major companies, you know, you can start networking, start figuring out, hey, where are the opportunities? Where can you get a job at? Um, and so here I kind of found this cool little graph of like what the different specialties are within data engineering. 
Um, so a lot of times within data engineering, you're going to be either be focusing on backend database management or building the ingestion engines, the data pipelines, or you'll be going into the ML ops specialty. You're going into ML engineering, AI engineering, uh, and then there's kind of a new specialty that's emerging called analytics engineering, where you can kind of see there's a little bit of a poke out for data visualization here and reporting where there is a certain subset of data engineers where it's kind of they'll build the pipelines for their data, but they'll also build the analytics dashboards on top of it. So it's almost like a full service uh, data team all in one. Um, so you can, that's a really popular people that, you know, maybe started out as analysts, but got into data engineering because it was more lucrative. And now they're like, okay, well, I want to experience a little more uh, interesting because if you're not seeing the output of all of your clean data, it, it can get, get a little tiresome. And then within ML engineering, you know, you're going to be focusing on either ML ops or ML modeling or experimentation, either designing the experiments, designing the models, um, or you're going to be figuring out how to deploy and then manage and orchestrate all these different models. Um, and so that's why I want to kind of have data, ML engineering as a separate section of data, uh, data engineering here as well. And so ways that you're going to want to maybe learn some skills, maybe get up leveled on um, or, you know, getting into data engineering uh, experience is, you know, you have Coursera, you have Udemy, you have uh, free code camp, um, lead code if you're looking to solve some interview problems. <laughs> And then also another big thing is certifications. Um, almost every big cloud provider has certifications. And so what these are, are basically just exams you can take. Um, and so they're typically proctored. I've taken these sometimes in person where you have to go to a, a testing center. And once you've taken that exam, you get a certification that's valid for like two to three years that says, hey, you know, you're know, you AWS certified, you're a pro at this particular specialty, and you can get really high level up there in the certs, like ones that are saying, hey, you know, you are hyper AWS certified to work with all of our data tools. Um, so it's a really cool way to get some experience without actually needing a job to gain that experience, which is nice. Um, and then obviously attend those conferences, attend communities, and just keep building that network because that's really how you'll probably end up getting a role in the ecosystem. Um, and so that's all I really had for you today. You know, becoming a data engineer is challenging, but once you've gotten, once you've climbed the mountain, it is very, very rewarding. So stick with it. You can carve a field, uh, career out in this field, I promise you, because not everyone wants to do the hard things in life. Um, and the power of data and the use of data in businesses is only going to continue to grow. So the, the TAM of your uh, possible job market is only going to grow. Um, and that's all I have for you today. I hope this answered your question and from the audience. And have a good one. Data guy out.